Let your mind settle down with the breath. Breath comes in, know it's coming in, know it's going out. Just stay right here. This requires that you train the mind, because the mind is going to be very easily drawn to other things. It'll slip right off like a little drop of mercury. So you have to be very careful with it. Why? Because the mind has all kinds of good qualities, but it has all kinds of not-so-good qualities as well, and it needs training. And this is what's special about us human beings, is that we can train ourselves. Animals require someone else to train them. All they know how to do is to eat and sleep and fight to keep alive. That's as far as they can train themselves. We train them further. But as human beings, though, we can train ourselves, and this is what's important, because when we look into our minds, only we can see what's down in there. And we're the only ones who can sort out what's right and what's wrong, what's skillful, what's not skillful, and figure out ways of developing the skillful qualities and letting go of the unskillful ones. This is what makes us special. This is how we show our humanity, by our willingness to train ourselves. We develop concentration, we develop mindfulness, we develop compassion and goodwill. All the good qualities of the mind, they're there in a small form, and we want to make them a large form. We want to bring them out so they become dominant in the mind. So take this time to train the mind, to do something special, to lift its level up. So at the very least we're on the human level, we can raise it above that to a higher level as well. The texts talk about the devas looking at human beings, and not really impressed by human beings, except on a few occasions. One is when someone goes, up, goes forth into the practice with the intention of really practicing. That's when the devas say, oh, that's a human being who's worth praising. Another is when a human being is dedicating him or herself to the practice. And then the final time is when the human being finally reaches awakening, releases the mind from suffering and from all of its unskillful qualities. Those are the three times that devas really appreciate human beings. The rest of the time they just say we're smelly. And they see us running around after things that don't really have any substance. But we can make ourselves special. We can make ourselves look for things that really do have substance. And this is what the Buddha would look for on the day of his going forth. He says he saw himself subject to aging, illness, and death, and looking for happiness in things that were also subject to aging, illness, and death. It struck him as a huge waste of time and energy. How about looking for something that doesn't age, doesn't grow ill, doesn't die? That was what inspired him. And that should inspire us as well. We look at our lives and where are we going? If all of our happiness lies in things that age, grow ill, and die, things that are going to be changing all the time, what will we have left? All that effort that we put into looking for happiness just goes down the drain, unless we look for something of much more substance, of much more value. That's what the substance of the Buddha's teaching is. It's the release from suffering and that can be found in our minds if we train them. So not only does this make us special, it leads us to a special happiness, and that's what really counts. Being special is not nearly as important as finding a happiness that will never let you down. <laughs>